on World News Tonight. Ukrainian aggression. Ukraine blows up the essential Crimea bridge which links the peninsula's rail line to the Russian mainland. Missile offensive. North Korea deploys a barrage of missile tests in a simulation to a potential attack on South Korea. Musk called out. China and Taiwan calls out the world's richest man after he issues a controversial statement on the issue. And eight is a thought. South Korea's Nissan farmers plant different colored paddy to make art visible from the sky. This is Adaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News tonight. Now, there was a powerful blast on Fleet's bridge that Russia has used to transport military equipment and a bridge that connects Russia to Crimea, an area that Russia reclaimed in 2014. While the Russian president called it an act of terrorism, some Ukrainian officials celebrated news of the explosion, while Kyiv itself has not claimed responsibility. The event is ratcheting up tensions as Russian hardliners push the Kremlin to retaliate. Tonight on Russian television, President Putin branding this blast that hit his prized bridge to Crimea, a terror attack aimed at the destruction of a critically important civilian infrastructure. <laughs> Briefed by the lead investigator, Putin asks, are you sure the perpetrators are the special services of Ukraine? The investigator agrees, helped by citizens of Russia and foreign countries, he says. Ukraine not publicly admitting responsibility, and in his video address, President Zelensky saying cryptically, it was cloudy in Crimea. Russian television today offering continuing coverage, suggesting a truck bomb showing part of the road collapsed and traffic moving, but slowly. The bridge consists of a highway and a parallel railway. The blast happened halfway across when a car and a truck loaded with fertilizer ordered on the internet, according to Russian reports, passed a train full of fuel tanks. The explosion seconds later. But some Western explosives experts suggest it came from underneath the bridge and that it looks like a highly sophisticated attack. Russian hardliners loyal to President Putin are again openly criticizing the military operation. One military blogger saying the enemy has stopped being afraid. Another, hammer Ukraine into the 18th century. Fears that Russia is preparing to escalate its brutality in Ukraine, underscored by nightly attacks on Ukrainian cities. Ukraine says more than a dozen killed in Zaporizhia last night. Rescuers searching through the rubble of apartment blocks. Ukraine believes the attacks are Russia's revenge for its progress on the battlefield. The fear tonight, there may be more, and perhaps worse to come. In the latest instance of the DPRK's act of aggression towards the country's enemies, a barrage of missiles were fired in the simulation to potentially attack the nation's southern neighbor, South Korea. North Korea says a flurry of recent missile tests were designed to simulate showering the South with tactical nuclear weapons. A warning, according to state news agency KCNA, after large-scale Navy drills by South Korean and U.S. forces. Leader Kim Jong-un has reportedly guided exercises by nuclear tactical operation units over the past two weeks, involving ballistic missiles with mock nuclear warheads. Its purpose, KCNA says, to deliver a strong message of war deterrence. The agency reported that the various tests simulated targeting military command facilities in the south, striking main ports and neutralizing airports. It also quoted Kim Jong-un as saying, even though the enemies continue to talk about dialogue and negotiations, we do not have anything to talk about, nor do we feel the need to do so. North Korea fired two more ballistic missiles on Sunday, officials in Seoul and Tokyo said, bringing the total launches to up to seven since September the 25th. The US and South Korea have held joint Navy drills recently, including one that involved a US aircraft carrier on Friday, a day after the South scrambled fighter jets in retaliation to an apparent North Korean aerial bombing drill. US and South Korean officials say there are signs the North might soon detonate a nuclear device in underground tunnels at a nuclear testing site, which was officially shuttered in 2018.
Beijing and Taipei have spoken out after Tesla chief executive Elon Musk said Taiwan should become a special administrative zone of China. The world's richest man said that he believed the two governments could reach a reasonable palatable agreement. Billionaire businessman Elon Musk has suggested tensions between China and Taiwan could be resolved by handing some control to Beijing. The idea of a special administrative zone similar to Hong Kong was floated in an interview with the Financial Times. Musk was responding to questions about China, where his Tesla electric car company operates a large factory in Shanghai. The world's richest man also said he believed conflict over Taiwan was inevitable and warned of the potential impact on the wider global economy. Beijing has long vowed to bring Taiwan under its control and has not ruled out using force to do so. It currently views the democratically ruled island as one of its provinces, although Taiwan, which is home to 23 million people, strongly objects to China's sovereignty claims. In the past, China has offered Taiwan a one-country, two-systems model of autonomy, similar to Hong Kong, but it has been rejected by all mainstream political parties and has no public support. When asked about Musk's remarks, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson said Taiwan was a domestic affair adding that Beijing would continue to adhere to the principle of peaceful reunification while resolutely smashing Taiwanese separatism. Taiwan's foreign ministry declined to comment. The businessman's latest geopolitical remarks come days after he proposed a so-called peace plan via a Twitter poll about the war in Ukraine. One of his ideas included permanently ceding territory to Russia. Musk pledged to support Ukraine earlier this year and provided a Starlink internet service to the country, which has been vital to ensure secure military communications. Musk said China has sought assurances that he would not offer the Starlink service there. Violence keeps rising in Iran as anti-government protests against the killing of the 22-year-old Masa Amini spread nationwide government forces have been seen to retaliate with full force against the protesters, resulting in over 185 casualties. At least 185 people have been killed amid unrest in Iran, a human rights group said following the death of a young woman in police custody, which has sparked protests across the country. 19 children are among the dead, Norway-based Iran Human Rights Group reported. The protests have become the biggest challenges to Iran's clerical leaders in years, with demonstrators calling for the downfall of Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Despite the fierce crackdown by authorities, protesters remain undeterred. In Javanrud, video obtained and released on Saturday showed fires burning on a road. Reuters was not able to confirm the date it was filmed. Videos on social media showed female students chanting Get Lost as Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi visited their university campus on Saturday. Authorities have described the protests as a plot by Iran's foes, including the United States. They have also denied accusations that live bullets have been used. Other demonstrations in solidarity with the women of Iran have taken place around the world. On Saturday, protesters gathered in London to show their support. The unrest was sparked after Masa Amini died in police custody. The 22-year-old had been arrested in Tehran for wearing inappropriate attire. French Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne arrived in Algeria with a top-level delegation for the visit aimed at improving ties with the former French colony and major gas exporter. France is on the charm offensive. Over a third of the French government was in Algiers, headed up by Prime Minister Elisabeth Borne, in a trip meant to reinforce and renew the partnership between the two countries. The Russian invasion in Ukraine has consequences the world over, and our renewed cooperation is also an opportunity to display our commitment to international security and stability. This visit to Algiers cements a new dynamic between us and a long-term relationship, which will be beneficial to both our peoples and our youth. She began the trip by laying a wreath at the Martyrs Memorial. The site commemorates the millions of Algerians killed during the country's war of independence against France. On Sunday evening, ministers signed 11 agreements, ranging from strengthening economic cooperation to developing green energies. We're all going to be working on how to make these agreements a reality. 
It's Paris's latest attempt to woo the former colony. Just six weeks ago, French President Emmanuel Macron had also paid a visit. It was then that he announced the creation of a joint commission of historians to examine France's colonization of Algeria, although he has said France would not apologize for its 130-year occupation. France also began talks to increase imports of Algerian gas by as much as 50 percent. A deal was expected to be imminent, but has yet to be announced. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, as more people return to the offices in the United States, the flu is also making a comeback. And with the easing COVID restrictions, coming to rises of flu cases. Kids are back in school. Adults are returning to the office. Something else is back too, the flu. As COVID restrictions ease, flu cases are on the rise. One city in Alabama reporting more than 250 students recently out sick. Everyone should get a flu shot. In New York, cases already widespread. The state health department releasing this reminder. We need to prepare for both flu and COVID this fall and winter. Nationwide, CDC data shows cases are 13 times higher now than around this time last year. So who should get the flu shot? Everyone six months and older, pregnant people, and seniors. But there is something new this year, a stronger type of flu vaccine the CDC is now recommending. So who should get it? And for anyone wondering if it's okay to get flu shots and COVID boosters all at once, a push for protection now to keep you safe all season long. Mass protests took place resulting in the election authorities in Bosnia and Sarajevo to order ballot boxes to be unsealed and a recount to be held at around 1,000 polling stations. Thousands of people in Bosnia took to the streets for the second time in a week, alleging that a pro-Russian Bosnian Serb leader had rigged a ballot during a general election earlier this month. The opposition parties in Republika Srpska one of two entities of Bosnia-Herzegovina say the candidate they backed, Helena Trivik, defeated longtime nationalist leader Milorad Dodik in the October 2nd election. They are demanding a recount of the votes for president amid reports of dozens of election irregularities. In a speech, Trivik demanded judicial institutions to conduct investigations and criminal charges to be taken against all individuals who took part in organized election theft, for which she says they already provided evidence and that the public is aware of it all. She added that thieves have altered the election will of the people. Dodik, who is the most powerful politician in the Bosnian Serbs semi-autonomous region, has denied allegations that he orchestrated an election fraud. He has ruled practically unchallenged for years, despite being sanctioned by the West, for advocating the separation of Republika Srpska from the rest of Bosnia. Final results of the October 2nd vote in Bosnia are yet to be announced. The Gambian police announced that they were launching an investigation into the deaths of dozens of children amid growing concern over imported medicines, especially those being imported from India better quality control of medicines in Gambia, just one of the measures announced by President Adama Barrow on Friday. In response to the death of dozens of children, Barrow said his government would stop at nothing to get to the bottom of the matter. Fellow Gambians, residents of the Gambia, I assure you all that government will leave no stone unturned to get to the bottom of this incident. I urge you, however, to be vigilant enough to ensure that all medicines sold or used are safe and effective. 66 children have died over a three-month period from acute kidney failure. No official confirmation has been given, but it is believed that high levels of diethylene glycol were found. For the parents of those who died, it is hard to comprehend what has happened. Red Cross volunteers have been going door to door all over the country in order to warn families of the possible danger whilst also recalling suspected contaminated cough syrups. On Friday, the WHO announced an alert over the contaminated substances, warning that the problem could stretch beyond Gambia. While the contaminated products have so far only been detected in the Gambia, 
they may have been distributed to other countries. Out of 23 samples tested, four were found to be contaminated, all cough and cold syrups made by a pharmaceutical firm in India. Austrian President Alexander von der Bellen secured a second sixth term in the office by winning a clear majority of votes in an election to avoid a runoff, according to the projections based on almost all votes cast except postal ballots. Austria's president is set to stay in office for a second six-year term. Alexander van der Bellen won a clear majority of votes and will be able to avoid a runoff, according to projections based on almost all votes cast. Speaking to supporters, he said the win has significance beyond Austria's borders. Europe has won, he said, and that the importance of a united Europe in the face of Russian aggression in Ukraine had won. Van der Bellen received 56% of the vote, while his main rival from the far-right Freedom Party, Walter Rosenkranz, garnered nearly 18%. That's based on a projection by pollster Sora for the national broadcaster, with 95% of the votes cast in polling stations counted. Neither of the main centrist parties fielded candidates in this election. 78-year-old Van der Bellen is a former leader of the Greens and has built his image on having a steady hand and a relaxed manner garnering broad popularity for projecting calm during times of national crisis. And he's seen his fair share of crises, including the collapse of the government in 2019 and the resignation of Austria's chancellor a year ago. The Austrian presidency is largely a ceremonial role, but does have sweeping powers that involve overseeing periods of transition and turbulence. The president is also the commander-in-chief of the army and can sack the government or chancellor. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Red Bull's Max Verstappen grabbed the second Formula One title wrapped yet again in controversy with victory in the Japanese Grand Prix after his closest rival Ferrari's Charles Leclerc was hit with a questionable post-race penalty allowing the Dutchman's championship to once again be awarded following the stewards' decision. Venezuela President Delcy Rodriguez mentioned that at least 22 people died and 52 went missing after five small rivers in central Venezuela flooded due to heavy rains. A volcano on the Italian island of Stromboli has erupted, unleashing a lava flow that has reached the sea. A partial collapse of the crater trace and lava flow triggered a three-minute seismic signal, after which the volcano sent up a plume of molten ash into the lower atmosphere. At least six children died after drowning in a pond in India's northern Gurugram city after heavy rains. The children aged around 8 to 13 years had gone for bathing in the pond when they drowned in the rainfall-filled water body. Several explosions rocked the Ukrainian capital Kyiv after Russia accused Ukraine of orchestrating a powerful blast that damaged a key bridge linking Russia and occupied Crimea. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you with mesmerizing visuals of South Korea's recent rice paddy fields where farmers had the idea of planting different colored rice in their fields to make pictures visible from above. Stay safe and have a good night.